Hey everyone, I'm Michelle Pava and I want to make sure that we were really going here. I am really excited because today is today is all about sacred water and I wanted to really bring to you some of the work that I do with my clients that you can do on your own or if you're a coach or a therapist you can add this to your resource box. So I thought that because today is all about sacred water and really getting in tune with how important water is, not just to drink water, not just to honor water, but to really see water as life. We know that we are mostly water. We know that we have to embrace and honor water and stop abusing water with pollution. Also to honor the female energy sort of associated with water. So we have menstruation, we have amniotic fluid, and this is all a part of obviously biology and life, but it's also a part of who we are, not only energetically, but evolutionary, biology, uh, intellectually, we need water. So I want to take this time right now if you want to go ahead and text, I think I'll be able to see if you ask me a question or something. I'm not like 100% on Google Hangouts, but I wanted to first show you this uh, mermaid in the background. So I use mermaids a lot with my female clients because it helps them to, from a very external place, express who they are as females. So if you have someone who might have an eating disorder or trauma, their mermaid may look like they're injured or they are too heavy or too thin. Um, you'll hear lots of complaints about the artwork and so forth. And so I want you to really just take a look at, this is just a quick sketch that I did earlier today, about an hour ago actually. And I did not really, I made you know a real big focus of hair and of just this beautiful silhouette. And for me, it's sort of that flow of water. So she looks like a wave unto herself. And I think that's very beautiful. I think it's a good idea if you start sketching mermaids as a female or as a male, and really just start to look at what the different areas represent to you. What does the fin represent? What does the hair represent? So what we're gonna do today is I hope you have watercolors with you or just a pencil or pen, please get them ready. If you don't, even crayons, it doesn't matter what you have. It's best to do this right now because you know I know what it's like. There's so much content online and it's easy to say, hey, this is a good idea, I'm gonna thumb it and get back to it. And you might not get back to it. So it'd be awesome if you just did it with me right now and asked me questions right now or if you connect with me on my site, we can discuss this later on, but I would love for you to do this right now. I love helping people in the moment. So what I did was uh, for this mermaid, basically art mindfulness, art meditation, I already started the background a little bit. So what I want you to do is create the sand and create part of the sky. We're not doing the mermaid yet and we're not going to actually do the seascape yet. What I want you to do is really just get, now I only have, let me just show you real quickly. I only have a few colors here. You don't have to really have much of anything. I just use an egg carton, recycle, and I have some blues and greens and some yellow, orange, tan, black and white, and that's all I have right now. I'm actually not using watercolors right now, I'm using acrylics. So what I usually have my clients do is, let me make sure that I get this high enough for you. Let me just move this down a little bit. Okay, so what I normally do is make sure that I have that sand and that sky. Now, when I am working with a client and they are creating this, I like to make sure that we definitely have a flow for what do you really want your sand to look like? What do you really want your sky to look like? So for me personally, I want it to go with something that had depth, okay? Because to me, today is all about sacred water, and I know that for clients that need to lose weight, water is really important. For clients that need to just feel more energy, water is very important. So even from an emotional place, 
I really encourage people to make sure that they're drinking enough water. I even keep water bottles in my office so that if someone doesn't have water, they actually have a BPA-free water bottle that they can fill up and use over and over again. So it's something that's really important to me all of the time, and today especially, because again, sacred water is just a beautiful thing to honor. So it's a good mindfulness focus. So the reason why a mermaid is important and what we're going to do here is really tap into what does the sky mean, what does the sand mean, the mermaid, and the seascape. So as we're doing this, we're gonna go ahead and create it and then I'm gonna help you analyze your own work. So let's go ahead and go ahead and do your background of the, the bottom, the sand, and the sky. It doesn't have to be fancy. Like, look at this, this is not fancy. And I am not claiming to be an artist by any stretch here. This is really just something that you can use in your coaching and your therapy practice. I am not an art therapist, but I use art in my therapy, and I love doing that and in my coaching. So I love to include creativity and expressiveness. So I want to share this with you. So go ahead and bring out that sand and dip into the blues and greens or whatever it is that your sky is. Maybe you have a pink sky. Whatever it is that you want all of this to be for you. And so what I'm going to do is we're going to take a pen or a pencil to draw our mermaid in first. So it doesn't have to be fancy. I usually tell people, I'm going to try to do this this way. Okay, so we just go with the hip and the fin. I usually have her just leaning. Here's the deal. I don't want you to, her, to have her facing outward. I want her to look at the landscape. So all you're gonna see is her hair, and then she might even rest her hand on her hip. And it can be very, very surrealistic, okay? Doesn't have to be super fancy. So as you can see, there's not a whole lot here that is, well, you can't really even see it. Let me try to get really close here. Can you see that? So it's not super fancy. You're just drawing her in, and nothing is, you know, etched in stone here. We're just gonna paint over her a little bit. So it's however you want her to be. So you're going to put the fin out here, the hair, maybe one arm leaning, the hair, and that's it. There's not a whole lot to this. So you're gonna take a smaller brush if you have a smaller brush, and you're gonna sort of just outline her maybe in a tan. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now just so that you can kind of see a little bit more of what's happening. So we're gonna outline her in a tan. I really should have had a better brush. My clients are always kind of like saying, I think it's time to get new brushes, and I sort of slack on that. So I'm gonna kind of go with the blue here as well, just so you can see what's happening here. So you can see the, the hip area going into the fin, and I'm definitely gonna use some brown and blue for the hair. Again, very surrealistic, obviously, it's a mermaid. So. And the reason why I like to use a mermaid is because if we go with something too real, we're going to be too hard on ourselves. So I like to use imagery that can be very surrealistic and that we can just sort of say, you know, we're just playing with the idea, not a big deal. It doesn't have to look like anything. I mean, honestly, if you just want her to look like a fish or whatever you want, just it doesn't matter. So now we're going to kind of make her skin green. We just had St. Patrick's Day, so this is perfect. I'm gonna give her a beautiful green, green haze. Get the arm out there. The other arm is here, and then the body is gonna be a little green. So do you see how I have her sort of leaning? So I'm gonna go a little closer here. Nothing fancy, okay? She's looking out into, she's sort of relaxing on the sand, looking out. Now we're going to decorate her a little bit here. So go ahead and decorate the fin area. And again, we're gonna analyze this when we're all done. So go ahead and create, and I'm going to help you to analyze your artwork. So this is why I kind of want you to do this now as opposed to later on, because why wait? Procrastination means perfection or it means self-sabotage lots of times. So don't self-sabotage and don't feel like things have to be perfect. Perfection 
is sort of this thing that will keep you from success and love and a million wonderful things. So I don't want that for you. So I'm adding some blue here. Okay. So we're going to fix her up in a little bit, but I want you to see that nothing fancy there. We're going to go ahead and do the ocean now. So the ocean can be whatever it is you want. And actually, you know what? You might want to take a bigger brush for the ocean. So I have a slightly bigger brush here for the ocean. And again, we are just being carefree with this. It is not about the artwork. This is not like, you know, a PBS learn how to do art, okay? This is not it. We are not executing art. We are executing emotions and feelings. And well, art is emotions and feelings, but you get my drift. It's not about how fantastic your art is. So I want you to think about how you feel if you're female as, you know, this mermaid is kind of your energy a little bit. So I want you to kind of get you in there. And so as you do that, you are going to really kind of see something interesting emerge. So we have this ocean, beautiful blue ocean. And again, beautiful because it's emotion. And it's just, you know, you might want to put some waves in there with a little bit lighter of a color. Again, nothing fancy. Okay, so there we are. We've got the ocean, and she's sort of looking out there. So I'm going to get you a little close up there. And I want you to see how my lines sort of just flow, okay? Now, what I want you to do is when you have more of your finished project, I want you to really start finalizing it. Like for me personally, I'm going to start with the sky. I'm going to do much more with the sky here. I want more of a blue. And I really don't, I see that I have yellow in here, but I don't really see enough yellow. I don't see enough of maybe a sunrise or a sunset. So this is important to me. So I'm going to make a sunrise for right now. So think about what you would want right now. Like, would you want more of a sunrise or a sunset? Like, where would you go with that? You know? And then kind of put some of the yellow in the water here. I want to really make it more vibrant with some of that yellow. So we have kind of that sunrise coming up. And you know how if you're at the beach, if you've had the honor of being at a beach, that you can really just see in the sky the different colors coming through and that beauty and that reflection of cloud and water and then we have to remember that the clouds unto themselves are in fact water. And so we wanna honor that. So we're honoring the water, the sacred, beautiful, gorgeous water. And I'm kind of muting it here, making it more like a nice hue instead of sharp color, because I just feel like I don't want it to be I want it to be more of a calm look. And I'm starting to feel like my, my ocean is a little bit like not really what I want it to be. I want it to be a little bit calmer. And so I'm going to drag some of my blue in here and make it slightly calm. I definitely want more of a calm ocean here. So as you're creating your artwork, Listen to what you're saying to yourself. If you've been listening to me, I'm saying, oh, the ocean looks a little bit too turbulent. I need it a little calmer. That gives you an idea that maybe I'm looking for some calmness. Maybe things are a little too hectic in my life and I'm looking for a little rest. So now we have this. And you're going to have whatever it is that you have. However, I want you to really decorate your mermaid a little bit more. So I'm going to actually add some kind of bright green to her in her fin area. 
and I'm gonna finish out that white that's around her. And I'm gonna tell you about that in a minute. If you see that with clients or in yourself, what does that mean when there's lots of white around? And what that could mean, and what you might wanna do if you find too much of that. So I'm gonna actually add a little bit of white as if the sun is sort of on her and giving a nice tinge of sparkle. And I'm gonna make sure that her hair has, how about some highlights, right? Get some highlights going on. Or maybe they're gray lights, right? Maybe darken up her hair a little bit. Okay, so there you go. I'm gonna sort of not do anything else. You know what, maybe I am. One more thing I'm gonna do here. I'm gonna put a little kind of seashell in there. You can put some seashells around, maybe a starfish. You know, little things like that that you can sort of put into your artwork. Now the reason why I wanted you to do this with me is because I want you to think about what is she looking at? So once you have your artwork, what exactly is she looking at? Is she looking at a stormy sea, a calm sea? Traditionally, this bottom area represents, could represent your current foundation, what you feel is happening right now. So I have some vibrancy, I wanted to add some shells. So maybe I'm looking at like things are pretty calm, pretty stable. I have her, she's very calm, her arm is resting on the hip, she's leaning, her tail is up slightly rather than just kind of laying flat, and she's definitely curvy, and she looks very comfortable in that. I added lots of different dimensions in her hair, and she might be a mermaid of a certain age. So maybe I'm looking at this mermaid as I'm creating it, and I'm thinking, okay, so, you know, she has some gray, she has some highlights, she has some dark hair, so she has a lot of depth and color going on there, so she feels very comfortable with who she is. The green of her skin, I didn't go with tan, I didn't go with a more traditional color, so I went with green. Green can mean growth, or it can mean that she's been going through growth and she's sort of ready to blossom into something else. In the ocean, you, again, I went with more of a calm ocean because I felt uncomfortable with the heavy waves. Now, you may put waves in there and you might feel really comfortable. So I'll show you how to do that. You would just add a little bit of white and a little bit of the lighter blue and you would just kind of make zigzags. And you sort of just do that and that's sort of some of the, the wave that you can add there. And so if you wanted to add some wave, you could definitely do that. And the waves may be excitement or passion or change. So she's looking out at a very, very calm, calm ocean and a beautiful, calm sky with the sunrise and the clouds are in the sky. So in looking at the sacredness of water, if I wanted to just focus on that, I would say that between the sand and the shells, there's water infused here, the mermaid, the beautiful ocean, and the sky. So there's really a theme of water everywhere. Everywhere in this quick painting is honoring that sacredness. So again, looking at what you might have, okay? Looking at what you might have, where do you feel that you have maybe some turbulence in your life, or maybe an area where you want to focus on yourself. You know, is your mermaid lonely right now? Like when I'm looking at this mermaid, she's very relaxed and she's looking out and she's enjoying the sunrise. So she might be enjoying new things in life or just really embracing whatever's happening next, taking the day as it is. And so how do you embrace life? Now, the reason why I also chose a mermaid, not just to celebrate that female energy, but also because she is really connected to the water. So for you today, in honoring the water, what ways can, 
can you honor water? In what ways can you honor the sacredness of water and the sacredness of yourself? So I really would love for you to either write poetry or create a painting, just something and, you know, get it to me because I would love to know how you honor water and how you not just, you know, maybe recycle or, you know, filter water, but how do you really feel about water? What does it feel like when you, when you get the visual of a waterfall or when you think of just a nice warm bath and just the, the pure blessing of being able to run water and take a bath when so many people are without water, when so many people don't have water to drink. And most of us are in a place where we have to remind ourselves to drink. We have to remind ourselves. And it's such a blessing that we even have that option, that we have this option to take a shower, to drink water, to cook with clean water, to wash a plate, to wash our dishes, you know, um, to give our pets a bath. I mean, it seems like a chore sometimes, these things, but if you think about it, do you know how many people would just love to be able to even have a pet, much less be able to give a pet a bath or to have a shower? I mean, think of all of the homeless people in the United States alone, in, I'm in Pennsylvania, in Pennsylvania, the amount of homeless people that don't have water, that, you know, we right now are able to think about, hey, let's get watercolors or acrylics and create artwork to represent, you know, our emotions and how we feel connected. This is a blessing that we even have the ability to do this. So I really just, uh, I want to go into also, before I go, we don't have a lot of time. I only allotted a half an hour. Winter also, if you're in an area that is colder or with the seasons changing and you experience winter with snow, understand that even snow being water is a blessing as well. So, you know, just the art of snowflakes is just incredible. So if you have a chance, go through Google and check out some of the the photography of snowflakes and really read up on that. It's sort of what gets me through some of winter because I'm not a super big fan of winter. And so if I study snowflakes and, you know, just ice and all of that, it's just beautiful, beautiful science. So I want to thank you so much for this time and this sharing. And it's not much, you know, it's just doing some paintings and talking a little bit about honoring your energy and and who you are and honoring water and the sacredness of water. So if you happen to be in an area that you're blessed enough to have an ocean or a lake nearby, definitely maybe visit that today or tomorrow and or anytime this week and just take a meditation, you know, take some time. I like to really use my painting as a mindfulness time. So, you know, if I weren't yakking with you right now, I might create some artwork and just really be silent during it and just really just see what flows. And, you know, as I say that real quick, that reminds me when we talk about emotions flowing or love flowing, it goes right along with how we describe water. So many of the ways that we describe water are the ways that we describe how we can release emotions and let our feelings be known. So we have so much in common with just water as an entity, not just that we are mostly water. So I think it it makes sense to kind of pay a homage to, to that sacred water and to feel very blessed and to honor that you are a gift. And I know that some people that are watching this are really stressed out and even creating artwork, your negative self-talking and saying, oh, I'm not good at art or whatever. You know, just enjoy it. Just enjoy life. Life is very, very short. And if any of you have lost people, either children or parents or spouses, friends, to cancer or any other, anything else that separates you, you know, it doesn't even have to be a death. It could just be a separation. Understand that you're in pain, or maybe you're in pain. You could have asked for the separation, but in some way you were in pain at one point or you're in pain now. And it can be very hard to be optimistic 
when you've had a lot of pain in your life, and I totally understand that. But getting into creativity, whether it is actual artwork or poetry or calligraphy, whatever it is, will help you to overcome. And it will help you to find your inner truth. And in your inner truth, it will help you to be comfortable with your truth. And the more comfortable you are in your inner truth, the more you're going to just experience the truth under your trauma or your fear that might be there that is really just there masking your greatness. So I want you to create and to be beautiful and to enjoy your life, to honor water, and to really get out there and just take this day as a celebration that might be new for you and see what you can do with it. And if you can celebrate it every year and just honor it as one of those non- money focused, non-materialistic kinds of holidays that you can just really honor and love. So thank you so much for this time and I hope to hear from you and I would love to see your artwork as well and I'd love to showcase your artwork. So thank you very much and have a very blessed day.